The Pew. The Pew. The where we will be discussing the difference between irony and coincidence. If we can even figure it out. If we can even out. figure it out. I for the I don't think as many times as it's been explained to me, I, I it's kind of a dyslexia that I have I will always um, have to think about it. You know, when when during the trials, this is another dyslexia I have. During the trials, when when um, when some the other side says something and the judge says it's either uh, sustained or what's the other one? Object object objection, and then it's either sustained or overruled. Overruled. I had such a hard time remembering what sustained and overruled meant that I had to write on a piece of paper in front of me, sustained means that the judge agrees with the objection, overrules means the judge does not agree with the objection. Right. So uh, a lot of people don't know the difference between irony and coincidence, and we were trying to explain to each other, to each other what irony is. Uh, I guess I think it's ironic that nobody understands what irony is. Oh, I don't think that's ironic. It's unintentionally funny. Um, I don't think it is, though, because irony is, 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 is something that not everybody is supposed to understand. Irony is supposed to be unintentionally funny. That's one of the things that makes it ironic. But everything right. that's unintentionally funny isn't ironic. Right. <laughs> Hence the confusion. <laughs> yes. So a lot of people misinterpret coincidence as irony. Yes. Yes. So a coincidence is just two things happening together, and it seems to be some connection, but there isn't. Right. Like. So it's like, like rain on your wedding day. No, I, 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 my, I, I my, uh, my example better that everybody leaving for work, leaving this building, is wearing a yellow shirt. And that they didn't know that you know they didn't plan it. It's just a coincidence, right? That is a coincidence, right? Or everybody's name starting with an M on this floor, right? Is a coincidence. Another coincidence. But if uh, how would it be ironic then? <laughs> well, I would think the irony would be if everybody on this floor decided among themselves to go to a funeral and dress up to show their respect. You know, to dress appropriately for to show I their respect, I, see, I, and they all showed up wearing yellow and pink. See, then I don't that think would be that, ironic. I don't think it that's because ironic. they were try, because they're trying to show their respect at a funeral, and but instead of wearing black, they're wearing these crazy colors. See, if that happened accidentally, then it would be ironic. But if they did it on purpose, then it's more camp. No, because it, it's not. Because irony is that you're intending to do one thing, but then you get you achieve an opposite result. Yeah, but they weren't. They kept, but they couldn't have been into if if they were intending to wear black, but they. Uh, well, they were intending to show respect, but then yeah, somehow but you can't they all intend like, to show respect by wearing. That's a really bad example. No, it isn't because when you if you ever go to church. Church, which I know you never do, but sometimes I do. Uh, sometimes you'll see women who are forced. going to church who are wearing like the sluttiest outfits that are completely inappropriate for church, yet they think they're dressed up and that they're dressed well for church. Oh, okay, well then that's not. different, but the, but the wearing... So it's right, ironic you know, that they think they look good and that they are dressed appropriately. That's the irony. It's unintentionally I, funny. I think that one is better than the wearing everybody wearing cheerful clothes for a funeral because um because uh, the, because the, the, I mean unless the people are just stupid. <laughs> I don't, it depends on the people, I guess. Hence the confusion. Okay, so <laughs> I, I like my way of describing it. <laughs> which Michael, <is laughs> that irony is special K because special K is very ironic. It, it, it gives you an ironic feel of using it, and cocaine is well. You said cocaine. No coincidence is, is like cheap cocaine. Yeah, because yes. it's all, you always uh, attribute more to it than it deserves. Yeah, and iron. Especially anybody who goes into a K hole will understand irony. <laughs> uh, yeah. So why don't you go snort some K? And you will completely understand what we just said, <laughs> and we'll be right back. Yes. Yeah. Don't snort some K. And now a word from our sponsor. Welcome back to the Pew. The Pew. And right now, uh, we're going to reveal a <laughs> something shocking news. Yes, very shocking. <laughs> that, <laughs> that decaf coffee isn't caffeine free. Yeah, and I did not know this. 
And in fact, I don't understand how it can be allowed. I mean, we, have, we live in a society that has so many rules. I mean, do you know that there is a rule? Um, when we were building our clothes, there's a rule of for how, the, you know, the stair, the lip of a stair? The, the lip of a stair has to be somewhere between like a quarter of an inch and a three quarters of an inch. And the, you can be anywhere in between that, but it has to be in between that. And the rise has to be a certain amount. And I mean, so, I mean, they have all these rules that govern every aspect well, of our society. Had, but and similarly, yet, similarly, there's a rule for decaf coffee. That and, it doesn't have to have no caffeine in it. It can have up to 20%. And I always knew that, so it didn't really b bother me that I was drinking decaf. Well, it doesn't bother... Well, it, the only reason... It bothers me for the opposite reason is because I don't want the decaf. I want more caffeine in it. I don't... I think the... the it's pointless to drink caffeine-free coffee. It's like drinking uh, water with, with brown food coloring in it. Well, not really, because there is caffeine in decaf yeah. coffee, so you actually are drinking caffeine. Just not so as it's much. like you just so, want a little. so it's like the difference just between it sort like the difference between buying um, cocaine from a, a good drug dealer or buying your cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Yours had somewhere between zero and twenty percent <laughs> cocaine in it, <laughs> and still you would go in my room and take it. And, and, well, I had to take five times as much. <laughs> okay, now well, that's the reason you have to do it five times as much. Yes. <laughs> a likely story. <laughs> One thing we noticed uh, in our household is that we always use these certain oh, yeah. words. It's very the, common it's words. The Elliglam lexicon. Yes. And I think we'll we'll need we need a a, a, um, a banner for this. So I'm just reading the Ali Glam with a big G in the middle. You know, <laughs> the, uh, the con con connecting the two. So um, uh, words. Our and, favorite words include clamor, inundate, um, outrage. Oh, where are the, where? Are the, oh, yeah, um, appalled. There are all these like very like um, loud and confused clamoring, you know, words that suggest running around wildly and like... Well, and I looked up the Google definition for clamor and it's a very appropriate word definition for yeah. our household. Um, a loud and confused noise, especially that of people shouting <laughs> vehemently. vehemently. Yes, that's, that's, that's our, our house. house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and... Uh, so, so that the use of those words led us to cliches and words that uh, it reminded me of words that are banned at the newspaper that I work at. So you can't use expressions at my job like the rain didn't dampen their spirits. Now, I would, that's, I want to ask you a question. Do did, do people actually submit articles with phrases like that in it? I well, mean, I do have to say that I once wrote an article that had the expression the rain didn't dampen their spirits, and an editor sent the story back to me, demanding that I take that expression out so uh, because esther did that to me in my book she she circled all of these uh all the tired cliches yeah and sometimes uh there is a paragraph that was nothing but tired cliches and it would be cliche 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 touche yeah <laughs> i mean and it, to the point where i don't even know what a cliche is anymore there's so many of there there's so many i, I basically should, you just speak in cliches i know i should get next time maybe i'll get i'll go get my manuscript and read you the cliches because i don't i don't know if they're cliches or not but um i like this meteoric rise uh meteors that's another cliche don't actually fall meteors actually fall to earth not rise right um you can't so, say there's somebody having a meteoric rise to success because meteors are crashing down you could yeah. actually say they had a meteoric fall <laughs> yeah. into disgrace. That that would be accurate. Yeah. Although it's still a cliche. Yeah. Okay. So what do bitches want to know now? Bitches want to know. Well, Ali Sacco Rowe asked what our dream jobs would be. That's hard huh. to say. I'd like a dream job where I, all I had to do is watch TV. Well. <laughs> I like the I, I like that I like just the phrase the dream job <laughs> that, the job that you don't really have to do you just have to dream about <laughs> so that's the job I want I can just sounds go, like sleeping that, yeah the job that I have I just go to bed and I dream about it hmm. <laughs> see you next time bye.